Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm Jean Molino, and I am very privileged to serve as the chair of the Convergence Board. Uh, to everybody here, everyone in the room, thank you so much for being here today, joining us for this very important uh, day in this symposium. And a special thank you to all of our speakers and our facilitators uh, and our wonderful and very generous sponsor and host, Aiken Gump. I don't know where John is, but thank you so much. And all of our other sponsors. Um, now, before I share some thoughts with you, I've been asked to make one request, so I will do that now. On the table are evaluation forms, and we want you all to fill them out. So if you haven't yet done so, please do so now. It won't take you too long. We're going to collect them immediately after my remarks, so you don't have another opportunity. <laughs> uh, I won't be insulted if I see the top of everyone's head for a minute or two. It won't be the first time that's happened while I'm speaking. <laughs> I'll be very insulted if you start checking your emails. You don't want to do that. Anyway, uh, so thanks in advance for uh, filling out those forms. We very much want your input. Um, our sessions today all reinforced for me the value and the importance of Rob's vision for this unique organization and for the work that Convergence does. And for those of you who are new to Convergence, and there are quite a few of you in the room, which is terrific, I hope you find our mission inspiring our work and our approach compelling and keenly important to our ability to work with one another to solve complex and seemingly intractable issues, and that you choose to support us in whatever way makes the most sense for you. We want your ideas. Of course, we welcome your support. Uh, we are all looking forward to our celebration, so I will be brief. Uh, I'll spend a few minutes sharing with you why I have chosen to be part of and remain a part of the Convergence family and to support Convergence in all the ways I am able to and how I think about the next decade in the life of this rather amazing organization. There are, of course, countless very worthy causes and organizations we can each of us choose to be part of. And we find ourselves in a moment now, as Rob mentioned earlier in the day, a moment when many people of all political persuasions and core beliefs, particularly about the root causes of our crippling partisanship and our deepest problems, would prefer to advocate, even fight, for what they believe in rather than talk. So the question is why in this context and in this moment, I've chosen to put my energy, my time, and my resources here with Convergence. Let me tell you what it's not about. It's not because I'm in denial and I believe that every disagreement we hold is best addressed through a Convergence-like process. I don't believe that. Nor do I believe that there are no fights worth fighting, whether through the ballot box or the court or the court of public opinion. What I do believe very deeply is that we need not be stuck on so many issues because of our differences, and that there are so, so many challenges we face that affect the lives of millions of people, where this approach, to my mind, represents perhaps our best shot at affecting positive and durable change, and we know that it can. I also share the view that the ability and the mindset to do what Convergence does has never been more important and that, I believe, is true. However, the politics of now or next year sort out, even more so, I would maintain, than in our recent history, as yet deeper distrust and ill will settle in on both sides of the current political divide, and we risk it becoming harder still for us to engage one another with civility. So to me, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, in the current moment that causes me to think that waiting to advance this mission makes any sense. My view is rather simple. We cannot afford and should not accept a crippling of our ability to improve the lives of our citizens because of our differences, and certainly not while we wait for one side or the other to win. After all, do we really expect partisanship to end at that point? And don't we want our decision making to benefit from the consideration of disparate perspectives in any event? Doesn't that help ensure that change is durable? And don't we want both to try to move the needle on tough problems and at the same time continue to build the community of citizens who know how to and have witnessed the value in and the power of this way of working? And so I believe the work of convergence, working with individuals and groups and institutions, 
of diverse, often directly opposing ideologies and interests, and who often come to issues with a lot of skepticism, if not cynicism, about the other, and working to build trusting relationships to find shared solutions and collective action, in other words, the work Convergence does and has successfully done, is first, critically important, I think essential, to the effective functioning of our society, including importantly at the government and public policy setting level, and on so many topics of consequence. Second, I do not see any other organization doing exactly what Convergence does, actually doing the hard work of convening a broad and diverse table of stakeholders and helping them form effective relationships and come to agreed actions, although there are organizations that promote collaborative problem solving and civic engagement. But I think what we do is a bit different, and I find it highly attractive. And third, notwithstanding these points, i.e. important and rare, if not unique, I believe that what Convergence does is replicable, and you've heard this theme throughout the day. And so I think of our potential impact over time, and certainly over the next decade, as much more than the collective sum and the impressive results of particular projects, but in getting the message of collaborative problem solving out there, recognized, talked about, as an effective way forward in our divided times, learned, kind of baked into how we, in the many places where collective problem solving needs to happen, engage with one another in good faith to find solutions to our challenges. And so I am very eager, in whatever small way I can as chair, to find ways to encourage us, all of us, to think big within our projects and outside of our projects. And our wonderful and very committed board, and you've heard from several members of our board today, is very focused as we enter into our second decade on both how we continue the great work of our projects, but also in how we can extend our reach and our impact by helping others through consulting or training, for example, to implement these proven methodologies to extend that community of citizens who, as I said, know how to and have witnessed the value and the power in this way of working. Uh, I've always been something of an optimist. I'm going to use that word notwithstanding <laughs> Congressman <laughs> Kilmer's remarks this morning, and, and a pr pretty, pretty positive thinking person at heart. And I've learned through a very long professional life at McKinsey and Company that an open-eyed, fact-based approach to just about any challenge can yield some great solutions. All that said, I realize that for so many of us, and especially on issues of public policy that affect so many of us, it is simply easier to live in the black or the white, where the other is the problem, and easier to speak with people who think the way we do, who share our worldview, easier not to be challenged than to be challenged. But I also believe that most people in the right setting, where they feel safe and they feel respected, and in fact are safe and respected, will open up to working with people who come to the issue at hand from a very different place, and they will want to be part of the solution. So back to convergence, this approach, the convergence approach. It's realistic in recognizing these realities about human nature, and at the same time understands that it takes, and it knows how to deliver, the hard work, the skill, the patience, the open mind, and the open heart that is needed to break through these natural barriers and to do so with an open-eyed, fact-based approach. When done well, we know this approach can lead to positive change. And I find this so, so very encouraging, and I hope you do as well. And I ask everybody here to get involved. Many of you, it's remain involved. You're part of the Convergence family already. But contribute your talents, your connections, and more to help us further this great work. There are many, many vehicles through which you might do so. You can introduce us to folks. You can introduce us to folks who in turn introduce us to folks. You can host a breakfast. You can host a dinner event. You can serve on a committee or a task force. And of course, you can contribute financially to whatever level is comfortable for you. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your attention. Um, uh, remember to fill out those forms. <laughs> Just leave them on the table. And I want to invite everyone to the first floor atrium. We're leaving this space. We are all going downstairs for our celebration, and we will uh, celebrate a few folks who've been absolutely instrumental with this organization in its first 10 years of success. Uh, so with that, thank you, and see you first floor atrium. Thanks. <laughs>